Hello, in this tutorial I'll show you why most people misuse the lasso tool when it comes to using it for frequency separation and I'll show you the hidden secrets that you may not have known when it comes to using the lasso tool as a retouching tool when you're using frequency separation so this is a tutorial for you that use only the lasso tool for frequency separation and also those that combine the mixer brush tool and later on apply the lasso tool technique so I just hope this is going to be really beneficial and if i truly find this tutorial really beneficial don't forget to hit the like button and let me know in the comment section if at all you have found out something that you never knew before so i'm just, I'm just going to come right to my photoshop 2020 i'm going to come to my actions because i don't want this to be a pretty long tutorial i'm just going to come to my action and i'm going to play my 16-bit action because i'm working with a 16-bit image right now so just going to play my 16-bit action and the action usually stops at a point when you determine the amount of textures that you want to remain with in your image so i'm just going to use a radius of 7 because this is when i'm just starting to lose out on the details in this very photo and by the way this photo was taken by mutema creations mutema creations and i'm going to link his youtube channel in the description of this video so that you guys can check him out and follow him on youtube or you can subscribe to his channel right here on youtube so uh, like i said just come and hit ok and i'm just going to let the action run and when it is done running we are just going to start learning how to best apply the lasso tool technique when it comes to retouching using frequency separation so i'm just going to leave this to roll a little bit and i don't know what is really taking place and basically i don't know what has just happened right now i'm just going to reapply my my action and just let it run once more so it is it, it may take a while and since i'm recording via premiere pro for my audio i'm just going to let it roll and take a time trying to run and play on this image but I really don't know why it is really acting up today. So right now we have it done right here. So what I'm going to do basically, I'm going to first of all turn off the black and white layer. And I simply come and I select the lasso tool. So in order to select the lasso tool quite well, or if at all you don't know it, just come right here below, it is below the key tool. And right click and you get the lasso tool. So usually I prefer to work with the lasso tool when it is in new selection mode right here. So you can see if I leave this, you can see it is in new selection mode. And this is the most important part for this very tutorial. So if at all you are using the lasso tool, make sure it is new selection mode. And the most important trick right here is the feathering. So I'm just going to leave the feathering at zero and I show you. The mistake I've seen most people use or do when it comes to using this lasso tool. So oftentimes when you you leave the feathering at zero pixels, it means that the edges of your selection are always going to be very sharp. Let me show you that right now. So I'm just going to make a selection on the skin area and I show you what this is going to show or display. So when you hit so when you hit Q on the keyboard, it shows, or when you press Q, it shows you the layout or the outlines for your selection. Just look at this selection at zero pixels. Let me just zoom in for you. You can see how sharp those edges are going to be when you apply your Gaussian blood to the skin. You can see how sharp that is. That is the reason as to why most of you people tend to be having those ugly lines from everywhere you apply your Gaussian blur when you're trying to do frequency separation. So always make sure the feather is not at zero pixels. So I'm just going to come back here to my lasso tool and I'm going to press Q again to hide that mask. So if I told you come and apply your lasso tool, let me show you this. Or you apply your frequency separation, I'm just going to come to filter. I'm going to come to Gaussian blur and I apply a radius to that selection. I'm going to move it up to the point when I'm just starting to close out on the details or until when I 
I'm having blended skin tone transitions. I'm just going to come and press OK just for this case. So when I zoom into the skin, you can see right now we have a very nice and nice texture within this area. But when I deselect this and I try zooming in, you can see it has still created that line that I was talking about. Just look at just right here above the eyebrow. So usually this tends to happen on the edges and areas that have maybe the eyebrows. So if at all you don't want that to happen to your images, I'm just going to undo that. The best thing to do is when it comes to the feathering, make sure it is between 18 and 24 pixels because when you put this to 18 pixels, for example, and you press enter, then you come and make a selection onto the skin. I'm just going to make a better selection. So I'm just going to make a better selection on the skin area right now. So when I make that selection and I press Q again, you can see that uh, this selection is all the edges of my selection are a little bit smoother. So if at all you apply this, it is not going to leave those sharp lines from the selection. So you have to take that into consideration. So even if I come right here to filter, I'm just going to press Q again to hide the mask. If I come to filter, blend, I come to Gaussian blur, and I apply that radius to the image and simply hit OK and I deselect. You can see there is no line right now from that specific area. So basically, this is what I was trying to let you know. So the lower the pixels, the sharper the edges you're going to be having and the higher the pixels in your feather, the smoother the edges are going to be. So I would recommend that you always use smooth or higher pixels so that you can have a smooth edge in your selection when it comes to using the lasso tool for frequency separation. So I just hope you have learned something from this tutorial. And if at all you have learned or you have watched the tutorial to this very step, don't forget to give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe this channel if at all you have learned a thing or two and if at all this video has really been an eye-opener to you ronix from Moon photography thank you for watching i'll see you in yet more amazing shows and don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating